Hey guys, what's up? Spencer here. Today, we're going to be going over elastic net regression. It's essentially the combination of the L1 and L2 norms, or ridge and lasso regression. If you're not familiar with those terms uh, or those particular theories, check out the links in the description. I've done videos on theories and the applied versions of ridge and lasso. So make sure you check that out. So let's get right down into the elastic net regression theory. As I mentioned earlier, elastic net is essentially the combination of the L1 and L2 norms. That's pretty much it. <laughs> it just combines the two parameters that ridge and regression, ridge and lasso have together and they put it toward the very end of the linear regression type of loss function. We'll get in a little bit more into what that actually looks like later down the road. But as I mentioned earlier, it combines the shrinkages um, from the lasso and the ridge, and it has the combined advantages of the L1 and L2 norms. But what are the benefits of using an elastic net? One, we don't really need to have any assumptions for the distribution of the dependent variable. So it can be normal, it can be Bernoulli, it can be Poisson, it really doesn't matter. Uh, so it can be like whatever, but we don't really need to have any like like uh, really, really cold cut assumptions for the linear regression, for example, uh, where linear regression has to have the normality uh, assumption with each of its terms. But in this case, for elastic net, we don't need to make any of those assumptions. And it also addresses the variance uh, bias trade-off. I went more into depth in this in the previous video. Uh, I believe it was ridge regression. I'll make sure to tag that somewhere up there. Um, but this is also really good uh, for sparse data handling. What I mean by sparse data is that you have many, many empty observations where there's either like a none value or a zero value. It's basically like empty rows or empty cells, so to say, if you're really familiar with Excel. Uh, empty cells with the, throughout your entire data, a lot of blank values. And ElasticNet does a really great job with that type of data. It also handles multicollinearity because that's one of the main perks of using Lasso um, because Lasso is inside of Elastic and Elastic has all those benefits associated with it. It also minimizes the overfitting on um, training data, which is a huge, huge, huge perk uh, when you are testing out models to identify what type of, uh, I guess, features are mo most attributable to the prediction outcomes on what you're trying to do, and thereby creating a more robust model to use in the future. And also, it's easy to interpret. What more can you ask, right? <laughs> so, why do we use both L1 and L2 norms? Um, previously, in a previous video, I've mentioned the differences between the L1 and L2 loss functions, but I'm sure that you can read that these are the primary differences between the two loss functions, robust, not very robust, unstable solution, stable solution, and potentially multiple solutions for loss, and there's always one solution for lasso, I mean for ridge, sorry. But there's one thing I wanna highlight in terms of the regularization or the betas that are being minimized, um, for particularly for the lasso. Uh, the overall analytical equation that I showed in the uh, lasso uh, video is that it's not very efficient uh, for non-sparse cases. So if there's like data that's actually filled in, it's very computi computationally intense to crunch out those numbers. And it would just take a little bit more time uh, to actually have your particular sparse output. So this is trying to figure out which of those features are most uh, attributable to your overall model. Uh, and there's also like a really nice built-in feature selection, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for Lasso, uh, where you have a zero to each of your features, uh, and you just take out those features from your model, and you can easily interpret what your model is. Uh, in comparison, when we actually use our ridge, uh, it's actually very efficient because of its analytical solution. None of the values are being canceled out, so you're continuously churning out data in and out, so it's always going to be I guess like fixed uh, n by n columns, I mean uh, n by n, column by rows, row by columns, uh, n by n, you know. And uh, we're gonna have like a non-sparse output since we still have all 
of our features that are associated with our model. None of our features are taken out or, I mean, they just have a very, very close to zero value related to their coefficients. And one of the downsides, since we're not taking out any of those features, is that we don't have any feature selection. So we would have to interpret or just use our, our intuition as to whether or not specific features are most applicable to the overall model. And that's sort of like a guessing game, but it becomes more of an art the more uh, experience you have in, in terms of interpreting these types of models. And this is the penalization. Uh, as noted here, you just have your L1, L2 norms associated at the very end, and you'd have your typical uh, linear regression cost function to associate it with this. So this is the entire thing for elastic net penalization.